Git is a very popular virtual control system. Suppose we add hundreds of lines of code and we add many, many files and suddenly we run into a bug. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go back to a version where it worked and then deduce what source change actually caused the bug? So that's what Git and source control gives you, a complete history of everything that you did. So I'm, I'm going to demo the absolute basis of that and going to do that in the terminal. So we installed Git inside the MCS2 system and also on the Linux and Mac. So we have the git command. The central concept in git is to commit. So the commit is a set of changes to files. A snapshot is then defined by applying all the commits up to a certain point. So commits are created by users and the first thing which we need to do is set the identity. We can do that with the git config command and set the property user.name to our name. So obviously choose your own name and do the same for user.email and choose your own email. We now set our identity and that will be used to create the commits. So Git keeps track of all the commits. A branch is appointed to one of these commits. And we start off having a default branch and it usually points to the last commit. We can say what the name of that branch is going to be. It used to be called master but more and more people are switching to main. So here the default branch is set to main. Then we can control how Git pulls in commits from other external sources. I'm going to set pull.rebase to false. And lastly, on Windows, we would like automatic conversion between Windows and Unix type end of line sequences. And we can do that with the core dot auto cr lf and set it to true. We're now done with the configuration of git. So how do we get a project under source control? We start off with the command git init. So this will create a directory dot git inside our project. We can see the prompt change. We can do a git status and we can see that all the files that we currently have are untracked. So we would like git to track the make file. So git add on the make file. Git add readme. We would like the readme in there. And all the source files. But currently we have only one .f90 file. Git status. And these three files which we just added are now what is called staged. And that's the step before creating a commit. Let's first handle the untracked files. So these are files which we typically don't want inside the Git, which are the dependencies, the executables, the objects, and this, this type of thing. So we can create a .git ignore file. And if I add, for example, the myapp.x and do the git status again, that file is no longer visible to Git. So that is what the .git ignore does. So people have created these files and they're put on the internet so you can google for them but typically they look like something along the lines of some stuff on VS Code history, dependencies file, objects files, pre-compiled headers dynamic libraries, module files, static libraries, executables all this stuff we don't want git to track so if you now do git status you can see that all of that disappeared they're still there but git just ignored them we did create a new file, so let's add the .git ignore also on the source control. These four files are now staged, and that's the step before doing the commit. The actual commit is done with the git commit command, where I can say the initial commit as the commit message. You can also do git commit, and it will open an editor. And this is convenient when you want to have more lines, for example, the whole paragraph. Git status, the prompt is green and the working tree is clean. With git log, we can see the history of all the commits. The commit has an identifier. We can see the author, the date, the time and the commit message. So let's create a second commit. 
I'm going to edit the source file, delete empty lines, fix a typo. Git status will show you that now the file is modified. So the first step again is to add and stage the file. And the second step is to commit. We've now created two commits. Let's try to upload this to GitHub. I created a GitHub account, I logged in, but I didn't do anything else yet. So we can go over here and for example, create new. The name is going to be the same as the project. It's not necessary, but it's convenient. So I'm going to call it Git Demo. You can choose whether you want it to be public or private. And we're doing an import, so we can skip these. Great. We're now in the step over here. So the second step over here is to call the branch main. We already did that, so we can ignore that. What we need to do is copy and paste this line into the terminal. And once we've done that, we can use the git push to push our changes from here to GitHub. So now it has uploaded all the files to GitHub. Let's go back to GitHub and view the files. Git demo. And you can see them up here. Let's now do the, do the opposite. We're going to edit the file. and make a modification on GitHub. Commit. So we now want the opposite. We have made a modification in an external source and we want that inside our files over here. So instead of the git push, we're now gonna do a git pull and pull these changes in. You can see it downloaded the modification, which was only the main.f90 file. Doing git status. Working tree is clean again. Let's do a git log. You can see that third commit over here. So that was coming from GitHub. So these were the basic steps of working with Git. One last thing which I would like to show is we did these configs. Where are they actually stored? So we can look at that with the git config command. And with this command, with the test text list, we can view where these configs were actually stored. So the name, email, default, branch, etc. went into the .git config file in your home. And all other stuff like the git remote went inside the project in the .git config file. Lastly, if you made a mistake on GitHub, you can go to GitHub. And for example, go to settings and have control over what you're going to do, including deleting it again. So this is called the danger zone. Delete. So only do this if you want to start from scratch again. And now it has been removed from GitHub. So these are the basic steps of getting the project under GitHub, setting up Git, pushing it to GitHub, downloading from GitHub, and in the next video we're going to do this not with the terminal, but from inside Visual Studio Code.